It's all about passion, it's all about change It's all inclusive, every day of the week When the world comes together, united as one Sharing stories with the eyes of Live View TV Hello everyone and welcome back to What Matters. I'm Jojo. And I'm Jess. And we are back with a wonderful guest. Can you believe it, babe? It's the 24th of the August? No. November? November. Oh, God, guys, <laughs> I have lost count. Don't even know what day, month or year it is. Oh, jeez, we're going to put up the Christmas tree soon. <laughs> put all our presents under there, babe. I'm going to go and buy you a present. <laughs> What, those presents over there aren't for me? No. no uh, one. What do you know? They're all for the kids that we don't have. But anyways, <laughs> we're not here to talk about Christmas. We're here to talk about the US election tonight, wow. So, which is a big one. I know it's been a big topic. Um, you know, I guess the election took place. It started a few weeks ago, and we're still counting votes. Oh, we're still counting votes. We're still doing lawsuits, going to the Supreme Court, and <laughs> a lot of things are unraveling. And that's why we've brought Jamal, um, Joel Jamal on tonight, um, so he can enlighten our viewers and enlighten us a little bit more about what's going on over there. Because we all know that what goes down in America effectively affects the rest of us here. And Australia. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And if you don't, um, you know, if you don't see that, then oh, you've got a lot coming. But anyways, hopefully tonight we can enlighten you. Hopefully tonight we can also learn um, a little bit more because I guess for us, you know, a lot of the guests that we get on, are, I guess that we can also um, the topics that we talk about are things that we can hopefully also learn more about because you know we aren't the experts. Mm. Uh, so we hope that we might learn a little bit, and you might too tonight. So we are streaming live from Indie TV to Facebook, to YouTube, to Overplay, um, and to a few different Facebook pages. But if you want to get involved in the conversation, head over to the What Matters Facebook page, find the live stream, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. And also, if you can, go ahead, share a little watch party, let your friends know um, that you're joining us. Um, Whether they're a Trumpy or a Biden, you got to tune in tonight. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. <laughs> but look, before we do get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land um, where we are sitting right now and all over the world, I guess, um, and pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations. So um, now I'm so excited to bring on Joel Jamal. So Joel Jamal is a 23-year-old part-time political commentator and lecturer for the Sydney Institute for Christian Studies. When he isn't performing political parties, he works as an assistant director, uh, ma uh, manager for a developer in Western Sydney. Joel writes for The Spectator and the Canberra Declaration while also producing his conversations called, um, series called Thin Ice, where he treads on the latest political landmines. In addition, he runs a weekly podcast called The Arc with Ricardo Bossi, which is amazing, guys. You need to check it out, mm. uh, which racked up to 2 million views in the first 12 weeks completely from scratch. Now, we wow. are so excited to bring Joel on. We are going to be speaking about the US election. So is there going to be Biden or Trump? We don't know. So let's bring on Joel and get the conversation started. Yeah. Election day turns into election month. Pauline Hanson takes a swing at the Great Reset, and Scott Morrison considers a travel bubble with China. That's right. This is The Ark with Ricardo Bosi. Ricardo, welcome to the show again. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Good to be here, as usual. I want to get this massive elephant out of the way, the US election. We had a chat last week about the debacle that it was. When I was setting up the show, I was frantically looking at the latest information. You know, Ricardo was very patient with me. And we were looking at which states Trump was contesting, which states there was fraud, and which states had uh, gone either way. He's going to need some of that Trump luck. Like, of all the times, now is the time. What do you think, Rick? I think he's going to win. Okay. I think he's going to win the, the court cases. And not just win the court cases. He's going to um, demonstrate the the utter corruption of the entire system. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there is no way that a man that barely turned up received more votes in American history than anybody else, because that's the line. Then the left will go crazy. Yeah. Then the coup d'etat will be attempted. Yeah. And then there will be violence at the, uh, leading up to, and, and potentially even including the inaugura excuse me, inauguration. Yeah. 
but then it'll settle down, and then we can watch the parade of depraved individuals, the deep state, as Trump lines them up, puts them in orange jumpsuits, and the, uh, the next four years will just be this wonderful spectacle of these people being locked up. Mm-hmm. And I hope there's some splashback in Oz, because the connections between Australia's deep state and the US's deep state uh, is there, mm-hmm. and the Australian people will see that too. I don't think people understand the gravity of this situation. Uh, uh, isn't it suspicious that on election night, Trump was winning pretty much all of these states, the five of these six states, on election night, overwhelmingly, I mean, Trump had a 700,000, you know, vote lead in Pennsylvania, for example. Yet, all of these swing states said, stop the votes, we need to wait. And it was only the swing states. Only the swing (coughs) states. The hard hard, uh, red and the hard blue states, Mm. they got their counts done in time. But where it was critical for Biden to win all of a sudden, and one included even a water leak, and people were demanding the pictures, show us the water. Of course there were none. Mm. And the next day, you finish the story. Well, the next day, it's just, ah, they just, they, they were like, oh, we found all these votes. And they just sort of arrived, and we've got signed affidavits. We've got 234 <coughs> pages for one state of signed affidavits from people saying, you know, a bunch of different allegations, basically. But they've signed affidavits. They're committed to this. Mm. All of this will come out in, the, in these court hearings that happen, and Donald Trump and his lawyer team, including Rudy Giuliani, who was the former mayor of New York, he actually dismantled the mafia. People, a lot of people don't know this. They underestimate him. The, it's it's going to all come out, and it'll mm. be very entertaining. This week, we saw, to our credit, Pauline Hanson mm. challenge the Great Reset. And unfortunately, only two senators, the other one being a One Nation senator as well, as well as Pauline, only two senators voted to oppose the Great Reset. Now, kudos to Pauline for bringing this up. Mm. But even if you got in, not even a senator was taken seriously on this. Where do we go from here? You have been warned, ladies and gentlemen of Australia, you have been warned that every party, bar one nation, in the federal Senate is in favour of the Great Reset. And if you haven't Googled it, Google it, watch it, and be horrified. Oh, welcome. welcome. Welcome, Joel. Thanks for coming here tonight. That was a great It's a pleasure to be here. It's, a, it's, so, it's so weird watching myself on screen and, and, and being on this end of the interview. <laughs> Hey, it was a great interview. We, we watched that ourselves personally and, oh, man, there's so much unravelling around the world right now and um, to have you and um, Ricardo sitting down and, and discussing what's really important and what's going on. Yeah. Um, it's a big eye-opener and it's, a, it's, it's awakening a lot of people. But, yeah, you know, like you, like what you guys do, it's, it's the information. Uh, we're getting the information out there and this is why we produce What Matters. It's um, so we can bring on people like you who are for the people um, and come and enlighten or educate us um, at the same time. And, and we're, not, we're not owned by the left media. We're not paid off not to anyway. tell a story or a narrative. But, look, I guess, you know, you're 23 years old. What on, what on God's <laughs> name got you, did, you know, it, like got you, why did you get into politics and how have you, what led you to become a political commentator? And we said we wanted to talk politics and, you know, a few people said you got to get Joel in. And we're like, oh, we love Joel, so thank you so much. But, yeah, tell us more. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it started about um, five years ago. I was following the U.S. politics with um, the U.S. and I was following it from more of a progressive angle. I found it very fascinating to see how um, the world was sort of galvanized by their election and the importance of it. But the difference was I was actually following from the progressive side. I was a big Bernie Sanders uh follower. For those of you that don't know who Bernie Sanders is, he's a big socialist. And um, it was really interesting having a chat with a bunch of people about US politics. It was fascinating following the Young Turks um, in 2016. And I followed all of their coverage. And so I always knew that the world was watching, but it was only a matter of time before I realized that um, Bernie Sanders would be stabbed in the back 
uh, by Hillary Clinton, the corporate Democrats. The socialists would be betrayed. And as a result, Donald Trump won the election. And I was devastated on election night. I was, I was one of those uh, liberals. I wasn't screaming to the sky, but uh, I, was, I was very upset. And the, the, it, was very, it was a big learning experience for me. And in mid-2017, I sort of followed U.S. politics, you know, just sort of teetered along. I bought into Russiagate a little bit. And then um, I had a bit of a, a, a red pill moment where I realized that I've got this completely wrong on Donald Trump. He, it turns out he's actually an all right dude. And uh, there's a lot of stuff he's, that have been lied, a lot of lies about the guy. Yes. Um, Are you uh, in media I mean, well? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and, and the I frustration to, with that is... My words. Of time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can, it can be really frustrating, kind of, because you feel like, um, you know, the media, they, they, they keep lying to you, your face and they keep making you think that you're crazy. We call this gaslighting. And they keep saying, no, there's, there's Trump only paid $750 in his tax. And it's like, well, no, he actually paid $4.2 billion in his tax. And you wrote that in your article, New York Times. People don't know that. But people yeah. don't read past the headline. And that's so it's sort of our job as the alternative media to make sure that they read just a little bit past the headline. And so I, I'm a conservative now. I've been a, conser I've been a conservative since 2017. Um, why did I start political commentary? Well, I lost my job recently um, in property development in um, uh, earlier this year in August. And I just thought, Okay, I've been following politics for a while now. You're going to take my job? I'm going to make sure people know what's happening in your job. And be under no illusions, I'm not going away, you know. I, I back a number of different parties. I, a lot of people associate me with Australia One, Ricardo Bossi's party that is spearheading. But I, I'm an individualist. I back individuals, you know, Joel Fitz, Fitzgibbons, yeah. he was recently um, kicked off the front bench. Uh, he resigned off the front bench from the Labor Party. That was devastating because this was a guy that brought mm. sanity to the Labor Party, especially on Greens policy. Mm. And to see an individual like that go, I was, you know, I was torn up. So I'm, I'm an individualist, you know, One Nation's doing some great stuff. There are some liberal mm. senators doing a great, great jo job like uh, Conchetta Firavanti Wells. But um, yeah. at the end of the day, I, I'm, he I'm, I'm here to sort of give the mic to politicians I think are doing a great job and also shine a light on maybe the politicians that aren't um, doing a great job. And uh, thankfully, as, as we, you, you introduced in the introduction, I mean, thankfully, the views from my Thin Ice podcast and my conversations with Ricardo Bosi, they've been going really well. And yeah, we just cracked yeah. 2 million views today, actually, today, actually, right on time. Wow, congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank you. So tell Thank us you. a little bit more. So what's going on um, in America right now? We have the, um, you know, the allegations of voter fraud and that all unfolding and now it's been taken to, I believe, the Supreme Court. How, how do you see things going um, for the Trump campaign from here? Well, look, all things being the same, right now Donald Trump's going to lose the election. That's the reality of it. He hasn't actually secured the electoral college votes that he needs. Yeah. Um, Joe, Joe Biden isn't the president-elect, but he's the prospected mm -hmm. president-elect. No, nothing's really changed at this stage. You know, we see all these graphs. You saw in that, in that video, you, you would see seen the graph of the, I think it was 290 electoral college votes to Trump's um, 236 or something, and you need 270 votes to win. Well, mm -hmm. all these maps that are put out by the media, they're showing Biden already won. The media yeah. doesn't call the election. They they just yeah. you know put their opinion out. You know that's that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> like, yeah. We've got a situation <laughs> where the electoral the electoral college is not called by the media. Um, technically, yeah. if you want to get technic if you want to get technical, technically, uh, Joe Biden has only got thirty six electoral college votes. And Donald Trump has got 74 electoral college votes okay. that have been certified by the states. Because what happens is, you know, you get all the votes that come in, the votes get reviewed, you have your legal challenges, and then the votes get yeah. certified by the states. And that's, that's, that's how the process happens. But, well, yep. you know, the media likes to jump to conclusions. In the age of technology, people are very impatient. Um, mm. then look, that's just, that's just, that's just the reality of, uh, of what, of what it is. But, um, it's not. It's not over technically for Trump. I'll, I'm. I'm more than happy to 
give this closure when it's time, but it's technically yeah. not over. Trump still has a few cards up his um, sleeve, um, one of which being SCOTUS, the, the Supreme Court of the United States. And um, a lot of these, um, a lot of these uh, law cases that are being put before uh, these courts on a state level and, and a federal level, um, Trump, the, there's a lot of losses we're seeing. I think there was something like 25 uh, lawsuits that have been dismissed by judges. Yeah. Those aren't Trump's. Yeah. Those aren't Trump's lawsuits. He's um, he's only got three going right now. They're, he's oh, he's not. Yeah. He, he's not. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're other people's because anyone else can can do a um, a uh, a lawsuit as well. So they're not actually his his uh, lawsuits. He has had had elect- um, He has had lawsuit losses. I think there was one in Pennsylvania this week. But if he has a loss, then that gives him an excuse to elevate it to the Supreme Court. A lot of people are forgetting that, yep. and we haven't had we haven't had that yet. Yeah, so he's so filed one um, to the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah, it kind of works. There's advantage, even if Pennsylvania have declined his lawsuit. There, it then moves up, which is probably where they want to go. He's got like one of the best attorneys, so I've heard. Yeah, Sydney um, Powell, and, and they're unraveling a whole heap of rubbish right now and it's not just pointing out you know voter fraud in america it's actually pointing out voter fraud um to every other country that's using this dominion system mm. um which yeah is there's um yeah it is it's very scary and i mean everyone uh, you know we should always have more transparency with these voting machines and um I'm a bit concerned about uh, Dominion because I think they're, they're here and they might be here in Australia actually, but um, I, I'd have to check on that. There's a lot of things that are being said online right now and they all have to be validated and checked. Um, Sydney Powell, you know, I didn't know much about her. I knew more about Rudy Giuliani, Trump's lawyer. But Sydney Powell's not actually a part of the legal team for Trump. She's actually a lawyer that can do this on her own uh, basis. Um, she, so she doesn't. She just happens to be at some of these press conferences with the Trump team. That's 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 all that happens to be. Um, I'd I'd warn a lot of people to be careful into listening to Sydney Powell too much. Um, I wish she everything was saying she's saying is true. But we saw this week Donald Trump come out with a statement. Um, I don't know if it was him or if it was his um, campaign saying Sydney Powell's not actually part of the. Trump campaign law team. Uh, she, she's actually, um, you know, doing this on a, of her own volition. And there's some things that she's putting out there that may not be provable in court. And that's that's a valid point, you know, um, that she's made a ton of claims. Um, she's made a claim about, uh, I think it was the Pennsylvania governor or the governor of another state that has um, links to Dominion. And those are some serious claims. And we're, we're yet to see evidence. And, um, you know, if, if the evidence comes out in court, Right, but at this stage we're still yet to see evidence, guys. And um, so, I guess my worry is this, and I haven't really talked about this much. Um, I haven't talked just about this on the show yet. But my worry is that the people on our side, on the side of common sense and of free and fair elections, we're fall- a lot of us Trump supporters. They're falling into the trap of the Russia Gate people. And for those of you that don't know Russia Gate, it was you know, when the Trump campaign had um, Hillary Clinton and the Democratic establishment come after him and all the intelligence agencies, the FBI, CIA, Comey, all come after him and say, he's colluding with Russia, Putin made him the president, this and that. It's funny how Russia forgot about this year's election. Isn't that funny? So, So we've got a situation where Trump supporters might be falling into the same trap. Trump supporters might be you know, saying, oh, you know, fraud here, fraud there. I'm, I'm worried that we, there might not be as much fraud as we might think. Um, and Trump did truly lose this. And there was a little bit of fraud that we don't have time to prove. But the biggest thing we've got to look out for is electoral impropriety. It's a different category. It's not fraud. It's, it's something completely different. Fraud is where you maliciously go out and um, go and try and change these ballots. Electoral impropriety is a situation like, in Michigan, we've got 70% of the books that don't add up. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. It means that in 70, 70% of the counties, the number of people registered to vote and that said they voted doesn't line up with the amount of votes that they got. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm. That's, wide, yeah. that's widespread. That's, that's concrete. Yeah. Mm. Those that are it's crazy. Wrong. And... 
Exactly, and it's very troubling because we knew this was going to be a problem, especially with the um, with the mail-in ballots. Um, I'd been saying it for months. In fact, when I was still at my job that long ago, I know that long ago, four months ago, I wrote this article called "From uh, From Election Day to Election Month," and yeah from election and from election month to election quarter. I, yeah. <laughs> I knew it was going to take this. I knew it was going to take this long. And, and unfortunately it might turn into election quarter. And at the end of the article, I ended up saying this could kick off a civil war guy. This is some high stakes. Yeah. If you have 75 million people on one side and 70 million people mm-hmm. on the other side saying that they don't agree with how this election result went, Something's yeah. going to happen unless one of the candidates concedes, and Trump is not conceding yet, but we'll yeah. see. And, and it doesn't make sense, you know, I mean, we, we followed both sides. We followed Biden. We followed mm. his non-existent rallies. I mean, he was. we know he was hiding in his basement. <laughs> there was five people at, attending his rallies, and mm. you look at Trump's rallies. And there were millions of people. Millions and millions. And there's still millions of people out there supporting him now, and that's what I don't get. If Biden got all these suppose millions of votes where were her supporters at his rallies because <laughs> they were also I, hiding I'm in the quite basements. the observer and i like to stalk both sides and see what they're both up to and who's pointing the finger at what well, they all both contradict themselves in in my opinion but the one thing that stood out for me was i could not find a decent size rally at least one or two that match Trump's. Yeah. And for me, that was enough to say, hang on, these votes. Doesn't make sense. I need to question these votes mm. because that did not make yeah. sense at all. Yeah, um, it doesn't. It, does, it doesn't. And so I guess, you know, in your intro, you did speak a little bit about the Great Reset and kudos to Pauline Hanson talking about it. But do you mm. think that the US election has a lot to do with the Great Reset? I think that um, if we're we're, we're speaking plainly here, I've said that every event that's happened this year has either been because of or made worse because of the US election. Mm -hmm. This is is the year. Mm -hmm. This is the plague year. You know, I I made a summary of... um, of the, the events of 2020 and I put a trailer, I called it the trailer for 2020. I did it to a big song called O Fortuna, a massive song. And I wanted to summarize all the events that have happened this year and how they actually connect to what's happened. And it's mm-hmm. been a crazy year, guys. It's been a crazy year. Uh-huh. You think that they were right? They were writing for three months for Black Lives Matter? Do you think that's what was happening? Yeah, no. Look, <laughs> I'm an Indigenous myself, and I've always protested for Indigenous and Black Lives, and our asses have been out there protesting since I can remember, and not once in my life have I ever seen the media give us that much attention. Mm. I'll guarantee you that not once have I ever seen the media give Black Lives, Indigenous lives, anyone's lives Mm. that much attention. So I knew for a fact that there was more behind what went on there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I, I kept saying to people throughout the year, because you, you notice when you when you follow politics with an open mind and you look at around the world, you pick up patterns, and that's what this that's what this game is. And I was picking up a pattern this year. I said, it, it it's not it's not that a school got shot up. It's not that you know coronavirus is a thing. It's not that Black Lives Matter. It's not that any of these things. It just happens to be the next thing they can use to bash Trump with. Trump yeah. is the an entity that Trump is an entity for the deplorables. Of America, that's how they see him. They see him as the the the, the sort of the, the tip of the spear they can attack, the face yeah. that they can attack. And, and, and the funny and thing is that once he's gone, that, yeah, they they're, exactly. And once he's gone, the funny thing is it's going to be that that they won't have him to attack anymore because he's not in power. Yeah. Hashtag well, resist. Hashtag right. resist doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's got to make you question a lot of things. If they're seeing this one man who, after eating my year, my own words, four years ago, yeah. after doing some research away from mainstream television and actually educating myself instead of listening to nonsense headlines, um, yeah. I realised he wasn't the bad guy or the villain that he was made out to be in the media. So mm. Mm. Um, for the media to continuously bash him and continuously put out false claims and accusations out there against this one man, you have to question, you know, what is... what. What is the good that he's doing right now mm. that they don't like because they, they're losing control because yeah. they've got this one man that's cutting them 
off every time they want to do something. And, and it's all, obviously, if you know anything about the system and how the system works, um, there's global agendas at play and, and whatnot, and that's why the Great Reset comes into play. But what do you think, Joel, tell us, what do you, how do you see the future if, one, Biden gets elected president as opposed to, to Trump being elected mm. president? If Biden gets elected president, it's going to look very similar to that of Obama. Now, no one knows what Obama's term looks like. Let me tell you, he earned himself the nickname Obama because he was the bomber-in-chief. The guy was bombing 13 different countries at the same time. He bombed Obama. Syria so much, he ran out of bombs in Syria. That's how much he was bombing it. I'm still waiting for my reparations on that, by the way. And the crazy thing is... He gets a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and, and, and we've got an economy which had a very slow recovery from the, from the GFC of 2007, 2008. Very slow recovery. He didn't cut taxes. The working class, it took them forever to see anything grow. They didn't get any increase in wages. The employment rate was a disaster. Black Lives Matter, the group started under... Obama, you know, you had situations where, you know, you had these f infamous cases of other black men getting shot up and you've got a black attorney general in the state, you've got a black governor, you've got a black police commissioner, you've got a black president, you've got a black DOJ, nothing changes. Why? Because they're the establishment. Well, th this is what you're going to see, guys. This is exactly what you're going to see. It's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. We will, mark my words, Trump right now, he's technically at war with, I think, eight or nine countries. It's going to be way more than that under, under Biden. Yeah. We're going to have, we're going to see, we're not going to see troop withdrawals. We're going to see a hype, uh, an increase in wars around the world. And that, I only bring that up first because mm -hmm. it concerns Australia. The mm -hmm. economy is a massive one because when, when America sneezes, Australia gets a cold, damn it. Like in 20, in 20, <laughs> um, in, 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 two, in 2008, 2009, how many, how many of our parents lost, you know, super or whatever oh, yeah. money from the stock market? You know, the, the, the economic, we're, we're lucky. Australia technically didn't go into a recession because we had such, we've got such a strong economy, a resilient economy. But the problem was we, how many billions? dollars did we see get wiped off the market i mean it sent my own yeah. parents bankrupt it was ridiculous yeah. they had a massive port property portfolio and they were too exposed and this was all because of a situation with <laughs> the u.s housing market like it has what does that have to do with us yet, yet it has yeah. a lot to do with us and we only just woke that woke up to that now in 2008 2009 i was in year six you know, I was a baby. <laughs> like, it, it, really, it, really, it, really, it really made uh, I, I, I get a lot of joy out of that. Don't, don't, don't give me too many opportunities. I, uh, I enjoy making people feel old. But the, but the crazy thing is people had a big wake-up call. It turns out that in this ec economy, in this globe of, you know, where we're all inter interconnected, where globalism has connected us through the internet, supply chains are all together, markets are all together, we're all we're, we're screwed. If if one person gets screwed, we're, we're all screwed basically. And so mm. now we're in a situation where we've got a president, um, Donald Trump, who saw the first sort of growth in low to middle middle income wages in a very long time, in decades actually, the lowest mm. black, Hispanic, and women's unemployment ever. Well, Insane. Been as in the first time the Republicans have taken the reins, as opposed to the Democrats who reigned for the last three terms is that is that where the the change was made as in the progress the, you, you mean in terms of um trump winning his last term yes yeah yeah look the republicans probably could have done a lot more but um it was really trump that sort of showed them the way um through that it was really trump that showed, showed them how to fight they didn't really know how to fight previously and we, we really mm -hmm. saw that with i mean particularly a guy like ted cruz he, he really woke up. He's a senator in the U.S. and also Senator Lindsey Graham, who earned his name Lindsey Graham 2.0 because he fought so hard for um, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court Justice, in 2018 um, when he was being attacked. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I hope that re that continues with the Republicans, but I I'm not holding my breath while Trump's not there. They need a leader, you know. 
So, look, we're in a situation where Joe Biden is not very good for the world. Um, you're not going to see Joe Biden holding hands with Kim Jong-un crossing the demilitarization zone. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see Brexit get across the line with the backing of America. You're not going to see yeah. uh, America backing Australia when we start poking the giant China. These aren't things we're going to yeah. see happen. And th that's the sad reality. And you know what? Maybe, maybe we need to go through this for people to see that Donald Trump was onto something. And, you know, yeah. if it wasn't for coronavirus, I think, I think he would have won. And yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I could talk about that for, for a long time. There's a lot of repercussions we're going we're gonna to see over the next few years from uh, Joe Biden. And I wish I wasn't on the losing side, but at this stage, it's not looking great, guys. So, so what happens between now and January? I think January twentieth is when the new president or whatever take, takes the reins. Um, if Trump did have any chance, you know, even though it's very highly doubt that he could win right now, um, I'm I I gotta sorry, I just gotta stop. Why though? If we were, if we are saying that the votes that came in, like the the amount of people that registered compared to the amount of people, the amount of votes that they received doesn't add up. Is it that there's not enough votes there still for President Trump? Because when I was listening to Sidney Powell, the Dominion program that they use, I guess what happened with that program though is that it's like a drop and delete. So they would basically get all of these votes, drop, drag and delete into a folder and then they're gone. So is, is, is that where we're at that they can't actually track all of those votes is that because i just still don't understand like we, there's too many people if, it, if, mm. if the numbers don't add up and i know there's all these affidav affidavits mm. i'm still maybe i'm still being because i think i see where we're going to go with biden and knowing that that's not good so maybe i'm still in a little bit of denial and until they've mm. until they've called the shots i think i'm just gonna be hopeful but i'm still not understanding the numbers and how they don't add up. Don't get it. Yeah, you've got to take you've got to take it by state. In Michigan, I gave you the stat, the seventy percent stat. That's just for one aspect. We've also got tens of thousands of dead people that also voted in the U.S. That's another thing that needs to be accounted mm. for. We've also got a situation where there are counties which had over a hundred percent of the county's vote. Now we've mm. got they don't have compulsory voting over there. You know, they it's don't get 100% of the people either. voting. Exactly. You know, over here, we've got, you know, we've got compulsory voting, yet only like something like 95% of our people vote. Yet over there, yeah. the registered people, there's more people voting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean I so this, so. this needs to be answered. So that, that, those are three different things. We've also got a situation where there are also people voting in districts that they're not actually, they don't actually live in. I think we saw that in Nevada. We've also got a situation yeah. where, you know, the a lot of the vote tallies that are being done, they're not being, they're not checking the signatures. And if you don't check the yeah. signatures, that's real fraud. That that you know, you, you yeah. have to check the signature. And the Democrats are pushing very hard for that. Look, you're not wrong. And then on top of that, we've got these irregularities, like the six thousand votes we saw in, I think it was Michigan, where, which ended up flipping a seat for a Republican. I think because it was what like happened 15, was fifteen thousand votes. It was, it was something like 15,000 votes that flipped. And overnight, before, the, you know, that's, there's that big joke that before they went to bed, Pre President Trump was winning the election. And then, then when they woke up, it had flipped. And, and people, yep. there was the system glitches and, and whatever. Um, so yep. there's so much evidence there that there is amount of fraud. Um, and it, yeah, I guess it just doesn't make sense. It really does. No, I know. I know. I totally get it, and if you know, if Joe Biden was interested in unity and bringing the country together, he would go and do an, a full investigation of this after the election. He would, because that then he could give peace of mind to the people to say, yeah. "No, you truly lost." And Donald Trump's, you know, loss. He can't say that it was it was false. He can't say that you know that Joe Biden stole the election because we did an investigation and we were very thorough and here's the evidence and and this is where we found fraud it wasn't enough but this is all the fraud we found and that's it see we're not going to see that and i think that's the fear people see and on top of that the two parties that went up for election this time around they're so 
their policies are so radically different, you know? The, like, Donald Trump wants to stay out of the Paris Accord. Joe Biden wants to stay in the Paris Accord. That's not a small commitment. That is massive. Do Donald Trump wants to be more, um, you know, mi militaristic and wants to oppose China more, whereas Joe Biden doesn't. In fact, he's happy to take, on a personal level, his family's happy to take millions of dollars from them. This is a very mm. big problem, guys. And, you know, yeah. Joe Biden was... And the funny thing is, I learned all the attacks on Joe Biden from the left when I was a progressive. And that's why I, I, I'm just shaking my head. Like, how did the progressives vote for this guy? Because, like, now you see people like Cenk Uga, who I used to follow at the Young Turks. I still follow him just to keep track. But when I was a progressive, I followed him heaps with the Young Turks. Now he, he has switched modes. He's no longer about, okay, we need to get rid of Trump. He, in his mind, he, we've gotten rid of Trump. Now we are the anti-establishment progressives. We have to fight Joe Biden. And it's like, uh -huh. guys, you just had to give Trump four more years and he was going to yeah. finish the establishment off. That way in 2024, mm -hmm. you would have had Joe Biden. So you would have had Donald Trump and a progressive or someone else from the Republican side and a progressive. And you could have had a, a true battle of ideas. But we're not going to see yeah. that now. Now you've got to unite in 2024 against the democratic establishment because if you don't think they're going to make sure they fix all of these problems and you know cover their tracks with russia gate and the durham investigation and all the problems that hillary clinton did and obama did if if you don't think they're going to clean that stuff up you're, you're being naive and uh, the progressive are going to learn the hard way with this but it's not looking good guys i'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat it it's really hard, you know, we know how much the election over in America affects us and we sit back and watch it and you absorb information from both sides. You can't help but think that they're at war with each other, themselves. Yeah. They're at war with themselves. And it's like, you know, the con continuous, you see it happen every election, every year, every decade, the system continuously divides the people. Yeah. You know, people don't want to be at war. They don't want to see their loved ones shot. They don't want to see anyone blowing up. They don't want. Yeah. They don't want to do that. It's the leaders that continuously do that, not us, not the exactly. people. We want yeah. peace, mm, yeah. you no, know? and uh, we yeah. want unity. Yeah. But when it, that's why yeah. you need the importance of selecting your leader who's going to keep that peace is, you know, it's a big thing right now, and and that's the scary part is a lot of us know that. When that we've had peace for the last four years, thank yeah. God. Um, yeah. What will happen when that power switches hands to the what, other side? What I did find interesting was, um, you know, as soon as you know President Elect Biden was announced, that all of a sudden on the TV I saw, you know, the issues with um, Iran popping up, and I'm like, oh my God, we've had four years of peace, four years of peace in the Middle East, and we've got President Elect Biden, and all of a sudden we're already talking about issues evolving in Iran and I just thought that's very um, coincidental is mm. it just not we go back to um, the Democrats and thought, we'll be back at war again mm. I don't know. look look back to um, look back to the UK I mean look back to the Obama years what did we see how did they deal with Iran mm. well they sent pallets of cash to them that happened they, they ended up making sure they had the Iran nuclear deal, which, as Prime Minister Netanyahu of I Israel said, that doesn't prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon. That paves the, the, paves the way for them to get a nuclear weapon. This is not good. This is not good at all. Um, they won't. Like, I don't know. I don't. Want, I don't want to say they're going to. They're going to go to war with Iran. You know, there are people like that. That Donald Trump used to have on his uh, uh, sort of executive or advisor board that said they wanted to um, actually have um, you know a war with Iran. But uh, but Donald Trump got rid of them. Um, well, we might be in a situation where we have a battle with um, Iran, but. Uh, that, and that might be started by Joe Biden, or he might take a different strategy and um, and do the appeasement strategy, which paves the way for them to get to um, yeah, to, to make make sure it paves the way to them to get a nuclear weapon. Mm, interesting, interesting. Well, look, Joe, you know what? It's been absolutely amazing having you on. I think we've gone over, but that's what we do here at What Matters. <laughs> <laughs> We loved it. Thank you for the insight tonight. Like, um, 
you know, the election is a big thing for, for the, you know, they've got everyone, for everyone. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's great to have someone like you who's so young, by the way, yeah. <laughs> a little political commentator, but so educated about what's going on. Um, in the bureaucracy of politics. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for um, for coming on to What Matters Tonight and sharing with us your views and um, your points on the election. Yeah. Uh, it's been my pleasure, guys. And, and you know what, can I, can I just say a big word? Do you guys take donations? Uh, no, we don't. But, oh, look, you know, we could work something out. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, guys, you, you should because I'll tell you, let me tell you why. I've talked to a number of different um, people this week in alternative media, and you girls, what you are doing, what you and your team are doing is phenomenally important. We need alternative media, and do not underestimate what you're doing. It is very important. And um, every, I'd encourage once you guys get a donation link on PayPal or whatever, I'd encourage everyone listening to the show to support you because it is it is so important. And I know you girls are doing it for love of country and love of our way of life. Yeah. So more power to you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, you Joel. made me all teary, of but we're going to take no. that advice on board. <laughs> okay, right. don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Your 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 time is your time is valuable too. Don't don't underestimate it. This is valuable work. What you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we do this because we, you know, we love humanity. We love the, you know, greater good. Um, we do this for free, just like you. You get on your channels, you do everything for free, um, and it's to help people and and to help educate people and give them alternate news that the, you know, the mainstream media um, forget to mention. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, actually, well, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't do it for free anymore. Actually, people have found value in it, thankfully, and um, they've <laughs> because I mean. People, people don't know this. Every year, we give a billion dollars to the ABC in our taxes. That's what that's what the yeah. government takes from us. And so, when people, when I say to people, "Look, I'm putting my channel out there. I'm not continuing this next year. I'm seeing how things go. Donate to me." People have been very lovely, and and I'm 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 currently empo employed. I'm currently employed by the people now, which is awesome. And um, I, I I'm not going to betray that. I'm my contract with them is transparency. My, my contract with them is transparency and, you know, if, if I take care of them with information, that they'll, they'll take care of me and uh, and that's it. So, look, yeah. more power to you girls. Keep keep up the good fight and uh, I'll, I enjoy, I'll enjoy watching the show next week as well. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank Joel. you. We appreciate you. Awesome. Um, and I guess we'll watch the space with the US election. Yes, yes. There's a, there's a, there's a, the December 14th, that's when the electors meet together. So... Patience, guys, have a coffee. It's, this might take, just strap in. This might take a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. You're lovely. No worries. Thank you, girls. Thank you very much. See ya. See ya. Oh, what a lovely young fella. 23 oh, years old. No, so, so much about politics. Wow. Kind of inspired me to, like, want to know more. And um, I guess, exactly. you know what, I'm going to stay hopeful um, mm. with the, the the election, I think we've still got a long way to go. Mm. I think not, regardless who wins, um, you know, as much as people want Trump to win or as much as they want Biden to win, I think they need to get to the bottom of the problem here, which is the voter fraud. Yeah. Whether it's been going on for how long and in how many countries, because we know that program, that software is not just used in America, it's used in a lot of other countries and probably here in Australia New Zealand. Mm. I've got to fact check that one, but I've been heard, I've been told. I've been told, yeah, it's been used along um, yeah. lots of places. But look, guys, that's it for tonight. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Uh, if tonight, if what we've spoken about resonates with you, please share mm. this uh, show with your viewers. And don't forget to follow um, Joel if you're you're into politics and he speaks your language. You know, follow him on the Arc Media. He has his own channel. Um, and he interviews um, Ricardo Bossi a lot um, on his channel, and they speak about. Oh, they speak about a lot of stuff, and it's just a, it's just um, good that we have someone here in Australia yeah. who is actually covering this stuff. So thank you, thank you again, Joel. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's us for tonight. Thank you to Indie TV for having us, and to our producer Bruce, who you don't see. He's backstage, always making sure everything goes according to plan. But thank you, Bruce. <laughs> we appreciate you. And thank you, Joel. And thank you to all the viewers um, who have, you know, tuned in or watched the replay. Send us your feedback. Let us know what you think. Mm. Until then, I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah. See ya. Bye. It's all about passion. It's all about change.